Hey guys, CB Super here. Wanted to go over kind of a quick tutorial on how to create this little Nas X title effect. If you haven't seen the little Nas Panini video, I'm only gonna play like the first five seconds to avoid any kind of copyright strikes. But I watched it the other day and I thought, wow, that's a really cool uh, title. So if you haven't already done so, go check out that video. Uh, it's a little Nas X song, Panini, directed by Mike Diva. Um, the link is in the description, and, or you can just click on the link on the, on the screen there. Today I'm just going to be going over how to create this neon text. So let's go ahead and jump in to DaVinci Resolve. And I've created a new project, and I'm going to jump over into the Edit tab, and I'm going to bring in a couple pieces of footage. So I'm going to bring in this uh, screenshot of that title, just so I have sort of a template. So I'm just going to right click and I'm going to import one more piece of footage. So I found this on uh, just stock footage. It's just this crazy like 80s retro neon uh, mountain. And I'm going to bring in this screenshot. Now I'm just going to shift click on both of them and create a new fusion clip. And all that's going to do is it's going to combine the assets, those two assets together. So now that I can click on this and I can come back to Fusion, and you'll see that I have two media ends. So I have media in one, which is the footage. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit F2 on my keyboard and rename that footage. And the second one is gonna be my template. I'm just gonna hit F2 again and call that my template. So I'm gonna be switching back and forth between these. Uh, and I'm going to use this uh, Panini, Little Nas Panini. It's kind of a template. Um, I'm not going to create it exactly because one, I don't have that font. I uh, imagine they probably made that font in Illustrator, did all of the coloring and animating and whatnot, probably in either After Effects, maybe even DaVinci. I don't know, we're getting more popular here in DaVinci, so I don't really need this merge node right now. I'm actually just going to... I'm going to disconnect from this footage and we'll go to that later. I'm just going to right click, hold, drop it in, hit input and move this footage down here a little bit. This is, I'm going to leave this on two. You can also just click over here and hit two and that'll load it up into the, to the right viewer. I'm going to go ahead and create a couple nodes just to get us started. First thing I'm going to need is a text node and inside this text node, I'm just going to type in little Nas X. Let me go ahead and merge this in so you can see it. You can either come up here, just click on a merge node. Now it's going to merge, if, if your cursor is on the text, it's going to automatically merge it, but it's usually going to merge it in as the background. Um, and, and we don't necessarily want that to happen right now. So I'm going to disconnect this using the right mouse button. I'm going to hold and just drop it on for background and then reconnect into the input. And then I'm going to grab this square and I want to load this in as the foreground. So now you'll see that I have a text on top of this foreground. Color this, use a little eyedropper, and I'm just gonna steal the color. It's gonna be just a yellow, but I'm gonna steal that yellow just to kind of match. I'm gonna size it up. I'm actually gonna move this over here, and I'm gonna change my font. So when I watched this video, the first thing I was thinking was, man, this really reminds me of the Blade Runner movie. So I typed in Blade Runner font, and sure enough, there is a font that they used. I don't know if this was the actual font that they used from the movie or if it was just inspired by Blade Runner, but I found the Blade Runner font, and if you if you want to download this font, it's actually free. Um, the link will be in the description below, and you can use it for some of your own projects if you like. Um, so just run up, find the Blade Runner movie font. Now the thing about this font is that when you want to just use the font as it normally is, you actually have to type it in lowercase. If you type it in uppercase, it does some really weird things and you can't really understand it. Um, so if you just type it in lowercase, it makes it look in uppercase anyways, because there, there really only is one style and it's uppercase and it's regular. There is no bold, there is no italics. I, almost, I find that you almost have to always uh, um, adjust the tracking a little bit because they're very closely spaced which in our case will work out fine because we actually want to extend it out just a little bit to kind of match a little bit more closely uh, the original font there you go um, one thing I can do is uh, I'm also going to create a 
background. I'm gonna connect this in over here as the background. So just so I can see it on black, sometimes I like to be able to see the background a little bit easier. Uh, and then you can also just click and load this up into uh, the first viewer if you wanna just kinda keep an eye on and go back and forth. All right, so I have that text. Um, one thing I noticed when I was looking at this text, and I'm just command mouse wheel in and out. One thing I was looking at this text is it has kind of a, a transparent internal fill and then it also has this like neon outline and then it has like this glow all over which could have been a paint effect um, it could also be a glow effect uh, we're gonna recreate some of that just using paint and we're gonna recreate some of this internal glow just using some soft glows uh, but first let's go ahead and finish building out our text we have the fill taken care of but I also want to add an outline now you could duplicate this uh, you could command C command V you could duplicate it um, probably disconnect those and then you could have one over here and this one could be come to the shading this one could just be an outline and then you can come over to this one and you could adjust the go into the shading you could adjust the opacity uh, these actually aren't connected so let's go ahead and merge this back in because that would be silly foreground so what you could do is you could have two separate uh, nodes this first one you could adjust the opacity and so now you'll see that you get kind of a, you know, a nice little, very close to the, what we were looking for there. But now if I want to move this text over just a little bit, well, now I have to figure out and copy and paste all the attributes into this other text. So it doesn't really make it very procedural when I have to manipulate two different texts. So we're going to go ahead and delete that. And I'll show you how you can use just one text and just add different elements to it. If you click on the text and you come over to the shading icon and where it says select element, just type in two, enable. Um, and by default, it's going to be a weird red outline, which we don't really need a red outline. We can call it outline and that's just the name. That's not going to change it. You're actually going to have to come down here with the color and we can just change it to a yellow. Now that immediately you see that that pretty much does the exact same thing as having those two nodes, except for now we have the yellow outline. And you can actually come in here and you can change so that uh, it's a little bit more rounded because you'll notice in the in the little Nas title, it's, it's a little bit more rounded than ours. Again, these aren't going to be the exact same. So we're using different fonts, but you know, we can kind of uh, use it as inspiration. And so essentially what we've done here is that we've taken one node and we have two operations inside that one node and you can play around with the opacity if you want you just go back to the element one and you can maybe drop that opacity a little bit more I'd bring it up just a little bit because uh, once we start adding in a glow effect so if we uh, shift spacebar type in soft and you'll see the soft glow pops up just go ahead and hit the add and right there you'll notice that it's gonna fill it in even a little bit more and then we can even come into the soft glow and we can kind of play with the settings if I think that's too bright or I want to turn the glow size down a little bit I can and we can play with that a little bit more later now we can make the rest of the title text here we're just gonna go ahead and select all of that give it a little bit of space command C click off Command V. We're going to do Command V twice just so I can create both of those at the same time. And we're just going to line them up here so they're within this little merge. So this is going to be my background merge pipeline. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect this and then reconnect using the right mouse key and make sure that each one of these is clicked in on the background. And I'm just going to change this text to Panini and I'm just going to move it a little bit. And I'm actually going to go back to my template just so I can kind of line up, maybe kind of center it a little bit here. Middle mouse button to move it around and just size it up until it's about the right height. That's probably good there. And then I'm just going to track it out just a little bit. Maybe that's too much. And shift it over. And that should be about good. And I'm just going to rename this. F2 to rename it. I'm going to just type it Nimi. I'm going to rename this one. Right click, rename, if you want to do it that way, Lil Nas X. And this third one is going to be our directed by. You can come over here to rename, and then we'll come over here and we'll type in directed by CB Super, because I wish. We're gonna, we know we're going to need to size it down a little bit, and let's go ahead and just move it while we're at it. So. I'm just going to move it just below just for a second so I can size it down. 
it's probably good and then just kind of bring it up a little bit all right so we can go ahead and click off that load back in the background and you can kind of see how it's already coming together so they kind of have theirs the little nos is offset to the right and the directed by is offset to the left and then they have these uh little rectangle shapes in here so we can kind of recreate these um instead of doing these three maybe i'll just do one and have it go across and then one go across on this this side um, and so like these all have the same soft glow so if you want to increase the glow on any of them you can um, because they each have their own glow effect so one thing i notice is if the text is smaller if you add too much glow to it it's going to be hard to read so i kind of drop the glow down a little bit and just kind of play with it um, play with the glow size and and play with the gain let me come back over here and I'm, I'm noticing I need to bring this down just a little bit because I want to kind of match whatever I do up here I want to somewhat match down here so if I move one I'm gonna move the other just just to kind of get it as close to similar as possible so I like how that's looking let's just go ahead and add um, let's go ahead and add a rectangle here um, I'm also gonna need a background node and you're always going to need pretty much a merge node. Let's go ahead and merge this in right now into the background. It's going to be the effect mask and into the foreground. And then let's change the color. And then we'll load this up into two. And we actually want to maybe change the width, change the height. Corner radius turned up all the way. Let's kind of get in here a little bit. One thing that we have here is that ours is solid. So if you if you click off the solid and then increase the border width, that'll give you um, a very similar look to what they had. So theirs is about half the height of uh, their text. And then we'll add in a soft glow. Nope, oh, that's too much. Turn the gain down, move the glow size. And then maybe we will actually come back in here and just soften this up just a little bit. 0 0.0025 okay so that's looking pretty good um, instead of just recreating this I'm actually just going to cheat a little bit copy paste move this down merge this into the background put this back in the input put this grab this rectangle and I'm just gonna move it over here zoom in a little bit and maybe just the width is gonna bring come in just a little bit you know, and with something like this, um, you don't have to recreate it exactly. In fact, if you wanted to, we could, uh, you know, copy this, paste another one, and something that might look cool would be to, we can even just bring this one up, like so. And now it's kind of, kind of looks like that Star Wars, maybe, maybe a little bit, maybe not. So, anyways. You can play around with it and there's a bunch of different things you could do but the only thing we know for sure is that this looks kind of similar to that but we're still missing we're still missing some glow one thing we could do is we could actually add a paint we could paint on um, and in order to paint let's go ahead and create a background and then we create a paint node and then uh, let's also go ahead and bring in a merge node so we're just going to connect background again input and then uh, this is just going to be input and then down here into the foreground um, so since this is a since this is a clip it's probably about 120 frames long come down to the stroke duration and type in we'll just type in 130 just to give us a little bit of leeway and then we can actually start coming in here and we can start messing with our brush control so brush shape probably going to be something soft uh, size this is going to be big enough um, I want it to be bigger so I can actually come over here and just double click on here and type in say 0.5 and then now that increases the maximum size. I can go all the way up to here but it's going to be way too big um, or I can bring it down and that's still a little bit big. Let's drop it down just a little bit more, maybe a little bit more uh, and then turn the softness all the way up. See if it's at 2 you won't see anything when you paint so you're going to want to bring it down just a little bit from there. And now when you paint, well, we're painting with white. Let's go ahead and change the color. Command Z, erase that. Come down here, maybe change the color to yellow. And that way when we paint, 
Now, and it'll be fairly soft, and that's what we want. We want kind of this fairly soft look because it's there's a there's a good penumbra, there's a good fall off there. You can come up here to the background and turn the alpha all the way off, and that way you'll actually be able to see everything will shine through through the background because now you've there is no alpha. You've turned the alpha all the way down, so now that all that's going to be left is the actual paint itself. So we can come in here and we can just kind of start painting and give ourselves this nice glow. And we can come down to the merge node and we can actually blend it in if it's too if it's too noticeable. You kind of blend it out. And what you're doing when you're blending something is you're blending whatever's in the foreground with the background. So if I turn the blend all the way down, you'll only see the background. So now you've turned off whatever was in the foreground and you can just kind of add it in just a little bit. So come back in here and I'm just going to maybe turn it up just a little bit. All right. Now if we want to go back and put this on our footage, just make sure to come over here, click on your background and turn the alpha all the way down and that'll turn it completely transparent and only leave what you want to leave left. All right. So back over in the edit tab now, I'm just going to take my fusion comp. I'm going to move it up a little bit. I'm going to take this rainy day footage. I'm going to drop it below it and I'm just going to trim it to fit. Using hit the B to make a little blade tool. Go back to A. You can click on this and delete it. My background footage is still a little bright and that's the only thing with these neon texts is that you're going to have to either desaturate and darken the, the background otherwise it's going to be hard to tell. And I can, I'm in the color tab, I can click over here and I can just, using the curves, I can just bring it down, make it a little darker. And right away, that's already starting to look a little bit better. So if you guys are interested in seeing how I um, animated the last one to just kind of glitch on using, um, just using keyframes and opacity, let me know in the comments and um, I'll make a tutorial on it. And don't forget to like and subscribe and click on that bell notification. Thanks guys. See you in the next one.